Uh, all right, Justin, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, I guess first things first, you're heading back to the Cowboys for another season. How does it feel to, to head with them again? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely something that uh, I wanted to do, um, something I feel like we had a common interest in, um, just them with me and then uh, me with them. So uh, it's definitely whenever you get to play for America's team, um, for three straight seasons. I mean, it's uh, that's just a blessing in itself. But uh, it's just been a great city of Dallas with all the fans, all the people that showed me, you know, uh, a numerous amount of support. Just happy to be here again. Yeah. How, you know, you've been in the league for a couple years now. How do you feel like you've grown as, as a player and maybe just developed this past season? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a journey for me, um, you know, coming out in 2015 and then, uh, actually starting in Kansas City um, for a year, you know, messing up my knee, coming back again, starting again, breaking my hand. And uh, now my role is uh, kind of different. You know, I play more of a backup, you know, star special teams player role. And uh, at, at first it was just something I had to get adjusted to from starting and playing a lot of defense to uh, barely playing any defense and then having to contribute in a different way. But uh, just like I said, I love football. Just been able to play, been able to help my teammates any way I can. Um, that's been that's been you know awesome, and that's why I feel like I've grown the most is that it's not always about you know going and making making all the big plays, but you know just being a, a player that can contribute to the team and, and be a positive factor uh, is a big plus. Yeah, are you satisfied with that role on special teams, or are you working towards maybe playing a, a bigger role uh, this upcoming season? Yeah, for me, for me, I just want to uh, like I said be able to help. Um, I think as someone in the NFL before, that's always going to be a goal of mine is to get to, to that or some some form of uh, actually playing. I mean, I love playing football. I love tackling people. I love, you know, like I say, helping the team. So uh, if, that's, if that's me playing a big role on special teams, if that's me, you know, rotating in on defense, um, I'll be ready for, for whatever. Um, and then also, you know, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't expect to be done playing football. I still feel like I got a lot. A lot of time left, so uh, definitely regaining a starting role is something I want to do. Um, so that's just something I work to uh, every day. Yeah. What does the off season looks like for you in the middle of a global pandemic? How are you kind of adjusting <laughs> to life and training? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been crazy. Uh, just just like everyone else, you know, you're, you're dealing with uh, not being able to do what you've always been able to do, and that's actually go to work. So uh, being able to or having to stay here at home and do virtual meetings and, and that whole form of life. Um, I actually turned one of my garage into a home gym. So uh, I guess being, uh, being born in Danville, you know, we never really had too much equipment or anything like that growing up, but the work still had to get done. So uh, like I said, as, as long as I'm breathing, I'm able to wake up and do something, um, whether that's running in the neighborhood, anything like that. And like I said, I turned one of my garages into a home gym so now that's that's been very convenient for me to uh get my workouts in and stuff like that and then uh, like I said having a football field um you can find them just about anywhere around here in Texas um so that's been, uh, that's been something that's been real helpful for me yeah so back back to the basics uh and you have you have kids at home right yep I do yeah what is it like um maybe having more time in in the house and how has family life uh been during this pandemic you you know what um being away um all season then spending most of my off season training and then now having to be at home uh you know I commend mothers and wives out there um <laughs> for the for the stuff that they actually do because it is hard like I you know I'm a professional athlete but running around with my son all day trying to entertain him or to get my my baby girl to stop crying I mean it's, it's definitely a, definitely a challenge so are you preparing for a, a season now or I guess are you staying hopeful that a season will happen and that it'll start on time yeah we're uh we're definitely preparing that way um we don't know as far as and camp and everything goes we usually go out to california but they moved it to texas so that'll be uh like here in frisco so that, that'll be a, a big change but the plan for now is to prepare like you know we're going to have training camp on time the seasonal start and then we'll make adjustments from there just depending on how the rest of the summer goes and then into the early fall did you have any any plans to come back to central illinois maybe during the off season and you that didn't happen just because the world exploded essentially 
Yeah, yeah, I always uh, try to make it back, especially for like my youth camp, I do every um, So I'm kind of going through a few ideas uh, as far as um, how I'll get that done or how I'll be involved, even if it's, you know, from a virtual standpoint, or whatever that might be, um, just because how the NFLs, uh, you know, they, they, they might have us come out two weeks earlier than training camp. Uh, they're just telling us to keep our schedule open just in case uh, they're able to move that report date up. Um, so I really don't know, but uh, I've been in talk with my people from Danville about different options, how we can get involved, uh, even if I'm not there. Yeah. Do, I know that's um, where I had spoken to you last. Uh, why is the youth camp so uh, important to you? Uh, yeah, it's very important to me um, just because that's, you know, that's the future. And I just remember being being a young kid myself in Danville um, and not really having someone who actually came back to give back to the community to uh, look up to. So um, I feel like that that's one thing my dad left me with. You know, he said, always come back and, and help back and do what you can for the sports community has certainly uh, taken a stand in today's social landscape in regards to George Floyd's death and racism happening in our country. I'm just curious to get your perspective on that and what are your thoughts on how the country has just responded to all of this? Yeah, um, so first and foremost, uh, my condolences to George Floyd and his family, all the people who've been affected by that, all the people who have been um you know, affected by everything that's going on in the world. Um, but as far as sports, I feel like we've always kind of broken the barrier of racism and social injustice when it, when it comes to, um, I guess, how we see color. Um, I mean, I've always been on different sports teams with people from, from all over the place. And um, I think just in sports in general, that's how we kind of see it. So just being a voice, because not a lot of people have been able to be like that. Not a lot of people have you know, been around people of all different, you know, um, ethnicities and backgrounds and stuff like that, but we have. So, um, so I think it's great that the sports world has spoken up about um, just the social injustice part, because we, we understand both sides of it. You know, a lot of us come from different, different backgrounds, and then we all meet up for one common goal. And um, that's, that's kind of how I feel about everything that's going on. Like, I'm not, I want to say I'm, I'm big into the rioting part of it the the anger but i understand it if that makes sense um so i i do not um i guess encourage any of that because to me being a, a being a big christ believer i believe it's a battle between good and evil and that's how i always see things like that um there's a lot a lot of great cops out there there's a lot a lot of um great people of color out there there's a lot of great people who who have different ethnicities and then there's a lot of horrible people out there there's a lot of people who um you know, are evil. And that that's a battle that they have to face internally. And um, at the end of the day, we all can't can't judge. Um, you know, that's not in our power. But to actually, I guess, try to understand, you know, how your neighbor feels and, um, you know, what you can do to help. Because being silent at this point um, really isn't something that we all can do. Um, so just been able to use your voice, been able to use your heart, um, been able to go out and, and show that you care about, you know, the next person. Um, and, and that's always been how I feel like, you know, things are. So it's about between good and evil and just doing right and, and loving each other and being kind to one another. I always stand on that. Yeah. How are you taking action in regards to this matter? Is it maybe, you know, teaching your, your kids the right lessons or how are you, uh, just taking action in regards to all this? Uh, yeah, so obviously my, my son, he really doesn't really understand. Like I said, he like when, when uh, kids are born, they don't see color that way. I mean, they, they see a kid that's their size. And they want to play. They see a ball they want to play. So just constantly encouraging that and then also talking to younger people, younger men in my circle and, and people that I mentor and just giving them how I feel about it. And, you know, we, we dive into our word a little bit more. Um, and then also as far as like the sports world goes, um, I know with us, with the Cowboys, we're, we're trying to figure out a way that we can get into the community and we can actually be a part of, you know, multiple, um, I guess, sides and kind of bring everybody together just so everybody gets a clear understanding of, um, you know, just, just what, I guess, the social world is kind of missing, uh, just that glue. So 
um, we've been brainstorming on a few ideas, um, things that we have to get clear, things that, um, you know, it's kind of tough with the, with the pandemic and trying to get, you know, people mm-hmm. to come together, um, you know, in more of a private setting to kind of calm things down to, uh, I guess, be able to go out and, and uh, help any way we can. So me personally, just, just helping people around me in my circle, um, my extended circle, just helping people mentor them on, on what it's like to love and be kind to one another, um, teach them how I was taught. You know, my dad never taught us color. He never really, you know, right. explained that. Um, it's something that, of course, we understood once we got older. But um, when we were young, it was like, you know, if you, if you see someone, you know, who has a ball or, you know, always be nice, always be kind. So just kind of, you know, encouraging that part of it. Right. And I know the NFL has been kind of at the forefront of all this with, uh, you know, going back to, to Colin Kaepernick and, and kneeling during the anthem uh, as somebody in the NFL to kind of have maybe an insider's perspective. How are you? Uh, are you satisfied with the way the league is handling all of this or uh, ownership with the Cowboys? Oh, uh, yeah, I am pleased with it because um, even the commissioner came out and said, hey, I made a mistake, you know, a few years ago. And I think that's a big step in anything that we do is to admit that, okay, we were wrong, we made a mistake, and then how can we move forward with it? And I think that's what that's what the world kind of lacks is that empathy to say, hey, I messed up, I was wrong, how can I fix it, and how can I help? And um, same thing with the, with the Drew Brees uh, deal. You know, he came out, he apologized, he said, hey, I was wrong, and that was on me. Now, how can I help? How can I do better? How can I learn? And I feel like that's everything that we're going through. That's the exact, um, I guess, problem is, you know, a lot of people have to say, hey, I'm wrong. How can I help? What can I do to be better? What can I do to understand? And just just knowing that the NFL is like that. So uh, blessed to be a part of an organization who um, understands it. And then a locker room who, um, like, we all knew that it was never about the flag. Um, in the locker room and of course you know when you come from different backgrounds everybody's taught differently so there's some people who thought hey this is about the flag this is that and everybody's entitled to, to their own opinion but um, for the majority of us we knew what it was for we knew um, the reason behind it and um, at the time if you actually go back and look there was a lot of teams who uh, knelt together there was a lot of teams who um, actually came together everybody from different backgrounds and took a stand and then there was there was a time where I said, hey, we're not going to do this as the entire NFL. And then that's, you know, that's when that was kind of shut down. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes this upcoming season. Yeah. What is your your hope for uh, the world? And I guess what do you hope to see happen uh, maybe just in the NFL and, and in our country in general? Oh, uh, yeah. Talks like this, I hope we never have to happen. You know, I, I hope we never had to have conversations that are based upon racial injustice, based upon, um, you know, how are you feeling about this situation, that situation. Um, so my, my hope in the grand scheme of things is that, you know, we don't have to have conversations that are that are based around, you know, race or racism or social injustice, racial injustice, any of that. So just being able to um, kind of get rid of that and see growth and and. Um, I challenge all, you know, all the all the young parents who do have kids to, um, you know, I guess bring them up the right way to where they don't have to, uh, like I said, see color. You know, everybody's kind, everybody loves each other, and you know, we all want to see a world that um, does great things. And I know for me personally, I want to see everyone do great things, uh, regardless of color, regardless of anything else. And I feel like, you know, that was kind of embedded in me when I was when I was young. And I feel like it's it's on the opposite end as well. Um, I mean, if you teach hate, if you teach hate, judge this person based upon the color of their skin, that's what they grow up and that's what they firmly believe in because I firmly believe in, um, I don't see color. And I know my son and my daughter, that's how I'm raising them. You know, you don't see color, you're kind to everyone, you love everybody and you try to help. You try to be someone that people can lean on. And I feel like that starts at home. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, growing up in in Danville, did you experience any kind of of oppression uh, in in football or in your everyday life, or maybe after uh, you had graduated from Danville and and gone to to college? 
Uh, yeah, I've, I've experienced it um, in, in different situations, whether it was, you know, getting, getting pulled over, stopped um, just because, you know, I was in the wrong area. Um, I mean, it even happened to me when I was when I was in Dallas and, you know, I bought my first house, you know, I bought my house and, you know, I'm, I have a red Jeep and it's seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm doing 30 miles an hour, gets pulled over. And it wasn't until, you know, I said, hey, I'm a member of the Dallas Cowboys. Um, you know, I just bought a house here and then the complete, I mean, it, it took a turn for it. Well, you know, good luck this year. I couldn't imagine not having that title and feeling like, you know, why am I being pulled over and there's no way out of this situation. Um, and of course, like being, at, being in Danville, you really don't um, see too much um, from what I, what I felt. It was always love. It was always, everyone was always kind to each other. And that's what I'm so proud about. That's why um, you know, when, when they had the peaceful protests and stuff, you know, I'm like that, that's my city. That's where I grew up at because, um, it's very diverse. I mean, we, like, I, like I said, I grew up with a lot of different people, a lot of different backgrounds and we all, you know, we all saw each other the same way as somebody from Danville. And that's where, you know, kind of like our heart was and our heart was connected. Um, in Ohio, it was a little bit different. Um, obviously being in college, there's, <laughs> there's things you do in college that I can't say, Hey, this was based on race. Could have just been my actions and what I was doing, you know, being a young kid. Um, but there, there are times where, where I feel like, hey, I got stopped or I got pulled to the side for a certain reason. Um, that was other than what was, you know, what it was for. So um, just, just my skin color, I've been kind of picked out in certain situations. But um, like I said, my, my dad also taught me how to handle those situations. You know, you be respectful. You do all that you can to. Um, you know, just, just obey what, what people are telling you. It just got to the point in today's world, which is so heartbreaking that even when you do do all that stuff you're taught as a kid, it still takes a turn for the worst.